What's up guys, this is Connor. Welcome to 3 Pedal Devils. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, Matt and I are going to design, 3D print, and install a temporary gauge pod for an AEM X-Series wideband AFR sensor gauge. So let's just roll the intro and get right into it. So if you guys are interested in the AEM X-Series wideband, AFR gauge and sensor. I'll put a link in the description down below. But it basically comes with a Bosch wideband oxygen sensor and an AEM wideband AFR gauge. The reason we installed this wideband O2 sensor and gauge is because the engine we built for Bose WRX has a lot of aftermarket components, has a bigger turbo, different size pistons, thicker head gasket, all kinds of different stuff that change, changes the operating conditions of the engine. And it had some fueling issues currently still has fueling issues where it's running super rich. So we needed this gauge to get a wider range and uh, more accurate reading of the air fuel ratio of the combustion products. So I took my dimensions and used them to model a representative gauge pod in SolidWorks shown on the screen currently. And then I passed it along to Matt where he pulled it up on his computer, started a new SolidWorks assembly and used it as a parent part for his top down model of the temporary gauge pod design. So we see him setting all that up here currently. We'll go ahead and speed up this footage and then slow it down once he gets close to the end of designing it and talk about what he came up with. Then at this point, Matt sent me the file. I opened it up and just kind of spun it around, took a look at it, opened up the measurement tool and looked at the diameters and the clearances Matt had put in place. Um, checked some of the depth distances just to see, just to see what kind of clearances he added to see if it would work out on my 3D printer or not. Matt gave me a really solid design overall so I didn't have to change any dimensions or anything, but I did go back and make a couple uh, minor changes just to make it easier and quicker to print uh, with less material on my printer, but that's about it. Then I saved it as an STL file, which is the uh, file format that the slicing softwares for 3D printers use. I happen to be using Ultimaker Kira in this case. So I went ahead and plopped the part down into the print bed and started setting up my printer settings. But right as I exported the g-code to send to the printer I quickly realized that neither one of us had added connector cutouts on the back of the gauge pod to actually plug the wires and connectors into the gauge itself so I went back into SolidWorks and guessed at how large those would be and the placements and just made them a little bit oversized hoping that they would be large enough for those connectors to fit in this mistake was definitely on me. I completely forgot to measure those placements and locations, forgot to include them in the representative gauge that I sent to Matt, and also forgot to tell him to include them. So he had no idea, since he wasn't the one that was actually handling and looking at the gauge in the first place. He didn't. He did what he was told to do and uh, didn't know he needed to add those. So I went back in and threw those in quick. So I saved the new STL, dropped it back into Cura, put the printer settings in, generated the G-code file, saved it to the SD card, and then sent it to the printer and started it up. Matt whipped up the design for this temporary 3D printed uh, stick-on gauge pod. Then we'll put some double-sided tape on the bottom here, stick it down to this clock panel, and we'll let the wires exit out the back where this clock used to be that we took out. We'll go in there, go down into the dash, and then wherever they're wired to. It's not a super elegant solution. Obviously, that looks pretty ugly, but this is just a quick temporary mount for it. So before I mount that up, I'm gonna take some measurements from this trim panel for all the clips and hooks, the placements, and then the overall size. 
so that we can design a complete replacement panel for it where it's got the gauge pod mounts and the access port uh, holder all in the same piece. So we're just gonna have two gauge pods and an access port, but this is a temporary solution, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I got quite a few measurements taken of the old panel. Uh, should be enough for now. I'm gonna go ahead, tape this up, put it back in the car for now. So I got some sticky tape on there. I'm gonna go throw the gauge pot in. Connector wires don't have enough slack to feed up through this hole in the clock trim panel like I thought, so I'm gonna try and stick it down like this for now. I fing hate this car. Hate it. Junk. Junk. Well, we just got it stuck down to here for now because the wires were not long enough, but we don't have much time tonight to try and fix that, so not the best solution, but it'll do for now. We'll come back to it another time. It's all hooked back in, mounted up. At least it's not floating around like it was before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Right up to, it's like here's okay, and right as you get to like 